Another Monday is here and we are back to your regularly scheduled programming after last week's short week. Hello and welcome to Tori's Take Live presented by Priority Health. I'm Tori Petri. The Lions dropped to 0-2 in the division Sunday with their loss to the Minnesota Vikings. We'll break it all down today, but while we do that, be sure you are sending in your questions using the comment section for a chance to have them answered later on in the show. First off, while it did feel like a big game to lose after last week's Monday Night Football debacle, it wasn't all that bad. How about Marvin Jones Jr.? Technically, Danny Amendola finished the day with more yards at 105, but Marv's four touchdowns and 93 yards were what kept the Lions alive in this game. He went off. It was really the week of Marv. He stole the show at a halftime rehearsal for the Detroit Youth Choir last week when he jumped in to sing with them, and he took center stage on Sunday, hauling in those four touchdowns. I sure hope you started him in your fantasy league and didn't leave him on the bench. Another area I'm impressed by, the Lions getting it done in the red zone. Of course, Marvin is to thank for that, as all four of his touchdowns came from the red zone. We were critical of this area last week, and if you listen to the one Pridecast with myself and Lomas Brown, it's something I talk about often, but let's give credit where credit is due. The Lions improved here this week. Now, where did things go wrong? Well, for me, a lot of the struggles from last night lie with the defense. While they did deal with injuries to Darius Slay and Snacks Harrison went out of the game for a bit, that's not enough reason to explain their struggles. I'm going to point to two major weaknesses last night. One, not being able to get off the field on third down, and two, continuing to struggle with the run defense. The Vikings were 6 for 10 on third down last night. Five of those third down conversions for the Vikings were on scoring drives. The six was a penalty on a kneel down play at the end of the game. This season, the Lions have given up a 71% conversion rate on third and short and fourth and short, and needless to say, that is not good enough. Then there is the run defense. Look, Dalvin Cook is good. He's going to get some yards, but it's not like Cook's 142 rushing yards Sunday is the first we've seen of this this season. The Lions rank 28th in the league in rushing yards allowed per game at 139. They aren't doing much better at pass rushing with the 3.98% sack rate, which is 30th in the league. The play of the Lions defensive back group has helped smooth over the stats on pressuring the passer, but they've continued to get gashed by the run. The defense was supposed to be the strength of this team, so it's confusing why this has been a weakness for them. Something needs to change and quick with Saquon Barkley on his way to Ford Field next week. We'll be back with the extra point and answers to your questions after the break. Stay with us. This is Mike. He runs one smart tomato farm. These are the fish he feeds that feed the tomatoes. Aquaponics farming? Smart, like choosing priority health insurance. It's how smart people access a network that includes 97% of primary care doctors in Michigan. End zone. Last year, Mark finished last in his fantasy baseball league, so this year, he brought his daughter to the draft. Him? Smart. Like choosing priority health insurance, it's how smart people access a network that includes 97% of primary care doctors in Michigan. Welcome back to Tory Steak presented by Priority Health. I am Tori Petri. Let's take it to our extra point segment where we go around the league. Today's extra point is brought to you by this kick return touchdown from Cordero Patterson in the Bears game. This cinematic shot is what makes it so good. Fox went to the sky cam here, probably expecting it just to be your routine kick return, but it turns out that he takes it to the house, which makes it so dramatic with this camera view. I absolutely love it. Uh, I feel like there should be some dramatic music playing underneath this as well. Look, I get that this isn't the best way to see the blocks that set up the kick return touchdown, but we could see those on the all 22 view on the replay. I absolutely love this camera angle and it made it a lot of fun. Let's take it to your questions now with this first one coming from Elk Dog. They want to know, was there a hangover from the Green Bay game? Well, I think that's a very fair question to ask, and I did ask that of Herman Moore last night on our live postgame show, and we both agree that I don't think that there was. I think the Lions did a really good job this week putting it behind them, not using that as something that they were relying on or talking about all week. They really shut that down, put that in the box like we talked about last week on Tory's take, 
and they moved on to the Vikings. The problem this week was they just weren't able to get it done. They didn't execute well enough, so I don't think a hangover was what factored into this loss for the Lions. Let's turn to this next question. It is from the Arrow Man, a famous Lions fan with his arrow there between the uprights. He asks, how serious is the carry-on Johnson injury? Well, we don't know the answer to that yet. The Lions have not had an open practice to the media or an injury report, but we do know that Carrion Johnson was on the sidelines riding the bike after his injury. I can't tell you whether that means he's good or he's bad, but that's all the information I have right now. You can take that for what you will, but he was seen on the sidelines riding the bike. He did not permanently leave the game to go to the locker room. This next question is from Kyle Cushway. He wants to know, can we expect a better pass rush with Bryant and Hand returning? Understanding our defense is a bend, don't break mentality. Well, I think what's important to remember here is that we don't know when the Lions will get Bryant and Hand back. Uh, they have not returned to play yet. Uh, Deshaun Hand has been going through contact practice, but we haven't seen him play in a game yet. Of course, he's been out since training camp, so he's going to have to have some time to shake the rust off once he gets back and the same goes for Austin Bryant who's been doing even less than Deshaun Hand uh, if he is able uh, to come back and rejoin the team. We'll see how those guys are able to impact this run defense but certainly injuries have been a factor in it with Mike Daniels being injured as well. That's another injury that has played into this. Uh, so that could be a factor in why the Lions are not playing as well with their run defense but keep in mind they have Snacks Harrison who was able to impact that run defense quite a lot down the stretch last season. So they should be playing better in the run defense than they are right now. So they've got to come up with some other solutions besides putting it on injuries. Let's turn to this question. It is from Walter Mitchell. He wants to know, what in your opinion does Detroit need to do to get over these so close humps and start winning? You're right, they are totally at this point where they get right to the hump and they can't quite get over it. We saw that against Kansas City. We saw that against Green Bay. We saw it against Minnesota yesterday. They play really well in the first halves of games. They are in there at halftime. You think that they have a real shot at winning and they do at that point in the game, but then things fall off in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think that that is really the problem that the Lions are having here is that they are not able to finish games. They need to have consistency all the way through a game. We cannot see this drop off that we're seeing in the fourth quarter. That fight that they're having to stay in games at the very beginning needs to last through the whole entire game and they can't get behind because they haven't been able to come uh, and uh, overcome that in their games so far this season. So that's definitely been an issue. You can't let yourselves get behind and you have to be able to push through and play for whole quarters. I believe that's the end of our questions for today. So we want to thank you for joining us here on Tory Steak presented by Priority Health. Love that you guys join us every Monday and we will see you next week from Xfinity Studio. I'm Tori Petrie.